Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. The top-down strategy is about to pay off. We got the BIS, BRICS, the Fed, Fed Now, SWIFT, and yes, Ripple. Oh, goodness gracious. And a three-letter agency and assassination. Say what? Yeah, say yeah. Say somebody wrote that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.52 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 3.2%. 65,000 plus for Bitcoin right now, 3,100 plus for Ethereum, 109.5 billion plus market cap for Tether. XRP at the number eight spot, 52 to 53 cents. We're up 9.2 on the seven day. Yes, love seeing that turnaround right there. And I think with what the charts are are looking like you're going to like this turn too. Right now sitting at 53 cents on fiat link ranging between 52 and 54 cents. We'll keep an eye on it. Oh, if you haven't done it, it's XRP Las Vegas and we're 11 days away. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. I had some amazing meetings in the last two days and we are crossing every T and dotting every I. We are so excited to have all of you there. And there are a lot of you. Oh my goodness. We are setting a record for this event and we're super excited about it. The future of digital asset benefit dinner where you can have private dinner with Brad Garlinghouse, the Honorable Christian Carlo, Michael Arrington, John Deaton, Eleanor Terrett, myself, digital asset investor, Perry Ann Boring, Cody Carbone. I'm telling you, this is going to be a who's who. And you have a chance to not only have dinner with Brad Garlinghouse, but you can also write it off because it's a charitable tax donation and we help the digital chamber fight the crypto ban, which is very real, ladies and gentlemen. Get your tickets for all the events. It's going to be remarkable. And book your room while you still can at the MGM and stay right on site. Walk to the conference. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. If you can't tell. And then we have the Bitcoin having that just ended. <laughs> if you've been in this space long enough, you know what the Bitcoin having means. There is a trigger point here. And if, if history repeats or even rhymes, we've got a good year or two in front of us, I can tell you that. Trader uh, says here, uh, a new channel in the weekly Bitcoin chart has developed in the week of the Bitcoin halving. And this is what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we are right here, the halving week. And the channel is showing a pop to 100, then some sideways movement around 90 range, and then popping again to 170 and then pulling back to 150. Now these are not predictions. These are just indicators on a chart. This is not financial advice, right? But let's look now domestically what's happening in the banking world for a second, because obviously Bitcoin is an alternative to these things, right? Look at this, $38.4 billion in deposit flight hits Wells Fargo and Citigroup in one year as J.P. Morgan Chase, CEO, issues a warning to the Federal Reserve. $38.4 billion worth of deposited money has left these accounts. Where'd it go? I tell you, this is a sure sign right here. Look, I, look, I wasn't even going to plug it today, but you know what? Miles Franklin will be at XRP Las Vegas on stage on a very important panel, and they're going to talk about why we've had these market shocks here lately, and it makes a lot of sense to me, not to mention the fact that this right here is screaming that there is some kind of problem coming down a road, just down the road here, and it's going to be a huge correction or a collapse in the financial markets, and that's why I tell you about Miles Franklin. All you have to do is email info at milesfranklin.com and put dig gold in the subject box to get the best possible prices. That's all you have to do. Uh, something is coming. I can feel that much. Just like this on the geopolitical stage. Now we're seeing that BRICS Alliance is having a summit, which we uh, reported a few weeks ago in October of this year, and they will be announcing new membership countries coming at the 2024 summit. So now even more countries are going to be announced that they're joining BRICS. Again, 
already looking at 80% of the world's oil and over half of the world's population inside the BRICS coalition. Thank goodness all I can say is, is that Ripple has a tie to Brazil and India and China and Russia and South Africa and Africa in general as a continent. And I tell you, I'm glad they have these ties because it, to me, it makes them more valuable to the United States government when they look for a solution in the very near term to head into this new digital financial world that we're headed towards. Speaking of which, BIS, the head of the BIS, Augustin Carstens, and Infosys co-founder uh, have proposed the idea of Finternet, a interconnected financial system led by tokenized assets. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Here it comes. You remember the unified ledger that the BIS has been talking about? Well, this is an extension of that idea right here. What they're talking about here is the system led by tokenization of assets that would help to overcome today's shortcomings in trans transacting financial assets. The core of this system would rely on the possibility of smart contracts managing these assets programmatically. That's where we're going. And all of this ties into Finternet harnesses the concept of the unified ledger we've been reporting on here, an all-encompassing system that includes wholesale tokenized central bank money, tokenized commercial bank deposits, and other tokenized assets. Programmability of this platform is what would accelerate and, en and enable these transactions. Users would connect to applications harnessing these concepts without having and manage these concepts greatly, simplifying access to financial instruments. Compliance would be built on top of these systems, which would mean reg tech along with fintech right? They have to have nodes on these networks to monitor all of this in an automated fashion, right? So that's what we're looking at. And this is where the world is moving towards here. Now, what's interesting here is you hear Eric Van Miltenberg explain a lot of what it sounds like the BIS mission is. Take a listen here. There will not be one ledger to rule them all. Unified ledger really means the ability to connect to all the different kinds of ledgers around the world. It's unlikely, I think it's almost impossible, that there's going to be one blockchain that is this monolithic thing that is going to be what everybody across the entire world standardizes on. Tell By America. definition, there will be different ledgers, different blockchains, different networks that exist. So putting the entire world on one blockchain, fundamentally, I don't think it makes sense. It's not how the world is starting to play out. I don't think it's how, how the world will end up being played out. So uh, Ripple kind of pioneered this idea of how do, you, how, do you, uh, how do you address that problem? How do you create interoperability between different ledgers, between different payment networks? Listen. And so we came up with a protocol, just like there was um, TCP IP for the internet. Um, our engineering team has created something called the Interledger Protocol, or ILP. And the idea being that these different networks, blockchain just being one, you know, ACH, which is the sort of money, the intra-country um, check clearing money moving uh, uh, network here in the United States. Visa is a network. You can argue that HSBC has a, a payments network, et cetera, et cetera. There are all these islands right now. And, and sure, you can, you can ask each of these networks to move on the blockchain, but then they're just kind of copying what they're doing and putting it over on a blockchain. There's scalability issues that come up very quickly when that happens. So the idea is just like the internet connected um, data networks around the world, there should be a, 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 a standard, a, a protocol that connects these, these value networks, these payment networks. And that's really what the Interledger protocol that, that we've developed and is now open source. It's now out for other people to build on and improve on and deploy. But, but it, it sort of got its, its start within Ripple. And that's really the idea, is to create these, these networks so now you can have interaction between the networks and create that efficiency, that interoperability of value that we'd argue is lacking, sort of that third component after the interoperability of goods, the interoperability of data. You need the interoper uh, interoperability of, of um, value. And just like you need standards for those other two, you need standards for this and the ability to, to leverage something like the Interledger Protocol to do that is super and super important. And so now here's the, the nice pretty. And there's the pretty diagram of everything being connected from the different ledgers because there won't be one to rule them all. But the ILP, the interledger protocol, will allow all these ledgers to talk to one another and crosstalk with one another in a manner that creates one unified ledger experience.
like the BIS talks about, right? Isn't it? And then just going back to yesterday or the day before when we reported this from Smoke Dog here, when he talks about the ILP connecting everything and understanding that, you know, the Interledger Protocol and XRP are the front runners to be the TCP IP equivalent in the world of fintech. It's exactly what Eric Van Miltenberg from Ripple is telling you right here. And this is what the grand image looks like when it's all said and done. That's where we're going. And if you need more evidence of it, here's Swift in their Cybo conference, which, by the way, is like the same. Uh, it's like the swell version of Ripple, right? But it's for Swift. Take a listen to what is said at Swift Cybo's conference about cryptocurrencies like XRP and XLM. Chain, smart contracts, digital assets to align the performance of banking and payment systems with those of the digital economy. The second takeaway I'd say is that the internet of value is beginning to crystallize. And let me start with a framework. Let's think of the old industrial flywheels that take a lot of energy to make a half turn and a full turn. But once they start turning, there's momentum and it's hard to stop them. So let's overlay adoption of blockchain and digital assets. They've proven value. So part of the first turn, feasibility, certainly. And now we're seeing these use cases get into the bottom of that first turn economic viability. And there's some exciting initiatives we heard about at Cybos around interbank payments, delivery versus payments, for example, correspondent banking, messaging, um, cross-border, interbank, uh, intrabank, intracompany. And importantly, when we get to the ESG, the S part, um, remittances. So lots of interesting energy there. And we're seeing cryptocurrencies like XRP, Stellar Lumens, and stablecoins like USDC uh, playing an important role in getting that wheel to turn and deliver the internet. Value. That's exactly right. And shout out to Linko Gearlish for those comments that remind us of the incorporation of this innovation in fintech that is being brought to every facet of the financial system, including SWIFT, right? And obviously she works for Salent, but it doesn't matter. She's at SWIFT Cybos. This is the conversation she said that's happening at SWIFT. <laughs> Yeah. And then I will remind you of this guy. Yeah. Of course, is, is uh, you know, some... David Andofado from the St. Louis Fed, who said years and years ago, when he did the help write the FedCoin report, that you could use something like Ripple if you don't trust the Fed. Take a listen. You know, you'd actually... Suppose you you didn't want the Fed to be uh, uh, responsible for processing the payments. I mean, suppose, you know, the, the Fed will likely impose some KYC restrictions on, on some purchases. They might not process some purchases that you might want to undertake. Um, and so it was at that point that I said, well, you know, we could, if we wanted to, extend the concept one step further. Uh -oh. uh, I'm not saying that this is ever going to happen, but just conceptually, you could imagine uh, not Fed wire for all, but kind of like a Fed coin where what the Fed would do is actually just issue these, uh, you know, Bitcoin-like objects, but um, and and they would enforce a, a, a par exchange rate with the U.S. dollar. That would eliminate the exchange rate volatility. Uh, but they could delegate the the clearing of these payments to some third party, you know, some sort of Ripple-like protocol or, or possibly. Uh... <laughs> It's at this point where I remind everybody that Ripple just announced they're going to launch a stablecoin off Ethereum in the XRP ledger. We have a two-tier financial system. I could see the retail digital stablecoin acting as a buffer for this transition of a financial system that we're going through while they develop a wholesale CBDC which quite possibly may end up replacing or becoming some kind of new version of the U.S. federal dollar, Federal Reserve note, or maybe it's a U.S. Treasury note. I don't know. But I think that moment is here, and I think that's the moment we're living in. And it's very hard to know if it really is because we don't get to see a moment like that but every hundred years or so. Things are heating up, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not here to chase green candles. I'm here because I believe this macro moment in our financial system, in our monetary system, is upon us. 
that's why I'm here. It's not hard for me to watch somebody win on, on uh, ABC token or whatever that doesn't do anything. I'm happy for those people. I'm also happy to sit on the sidelines and not be those people. And I hope all of them make a gazillion dollars on the meme coins out here in the world. But for me, that's not why I'm here. For me, I'm more comfortable doing the longer macro play. And I don't mind if I miss things along the way because that's not what I'm here for. That's not how I'm built. And I'm not trying to re-engineer anyone else. I'm just explaining my digital perspectives to this space and where I'm comfortable and how I invest is how I'm comfortable. That's why I'm not a day trader or a swing trader. Those things are not comfortable to me. And I know people who are very good at them. And I'm not one of them. So I'm a long-term macro investor. I love trends. I love finding things like industries of growth, growth industries like blockchain, automation, fintech, uh, you know, more broadly. I love all of this. AI. I like to find industries, growth industries that are going to disrupt the way things work because inside of those are opportunities that I see and I can comfortably monitor them over a period of time as I've done in this space. All right, that's going to do it for me. I want to show you some charts before we get out of here. Look at this right here. Yeah, this happens to be where we are. Now, I don't know about you. I have no idea where we're going, but I can tell you what, I like the way this chart looks while we wait to find out. That's what that's why I like to say it. And I like this. Back in the day, we had the bent fork chart from Egg Rag Crypto, the one and only OG right here. This is the original post almost a year ago. But look where we are. And look how strong this chart still holds up today. That's what I love about the work of the technical analyst out here. Look at this. I tell you, this is amazing. Dollar, 350, 17 bucks. And looking at that previous chart, the way it's set up, I don't know where this goes or if it goes to 39 cents, who knows? But one thing I do know is I couldn't be more excited about what I'm finding about this asset and the journey of distributed ledger technology and the incorporation of tokenization and digital assets into our financial system. We're going into the freedom zone, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you will join us. My goodness gracious, three-letter agencies right here in our country and assassination and confirmation. You'll want to join us in the freedom zone. It truly is the only place where we can cover anything we want to. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. And it's a great way to support the channel for almost next to nothing. And I am super grateful for all of your support. It's for less than a cost of a cup of coffee a month. You can support the channel and get all the videos I put out daily with zero Google free ads, as well as access to a private Telegram group, as well as discount code for that private dinner for Brad Garling House. It's inside this group and you can get to it and it is a big discount and have dinner with Brad Garlinghouse. Look, that's it for me. Not financial advice for me or anyone else. We're going into the freedom zone right now. Come on in. All right. Welcome back, everybody.